Welcome to this shortwave radio channel and uh, we are taking a look of course megahertz by megahertz and because it's night time we're going to take a look at the low bands and we'll continue the higher frequencies uh, tomorrow in the daytime as uh, time permits. So this is a look at the first megahertz of the spectrum. Now this is in shortwave. Shortwave starts at 3 megahertz but we'll include it in the 30 megahertz spectrum because a lot of receivers are what we call general coverage and that means they actually go down to the long wave band so 0 to 1 megahertz is part um, long wave and part medium wave in frequency range so what's in this frequency range First of all, the low part of, and what you're hearing right now is, by the way, a non-directional beacon that is in the long wave frequency range and that I hear over here. Now, there's a lot of spurious signals in here because the medium wave band here is packed with stations and they are overloading my RSP1A on the uh, low frequency range. To eliminate that, I would have to add the notch for medium wave. Now, I still hear the beacon, so we'll keep the notch and see... Uh, if it's uh, okay for uh, the uh, listening but we could see that uh, well it doesn't affect long wave that much so it's gonna be okay it does affect medium wave a lot uh, and we'll explain what these signals are all about when you actually go to the first 50 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz of the long wave band or the, this is even longer than long wave it's a very low frequency range the first few kilohertz are res are actually reserved for um, mar maritime communications with submarines. Submarines need and have a lot of difficulty communicating when they are in deep waters. And uh, long wave is one of the ways that actually it can work. And long wave is one of the rare frequency ranges that actually penetrates water to a certain depth. So the first few kilohertz often you will have stations that are um, for submarine communications. You'll have then follow-up of um, some uh, time signal stations. Uh, here in North America we know uh, WWVB which is the long wave version of um, the WWV signal but it's different. It actually is what is used to sync the atomic clocks that you purchase. It is on 60 kilohertz, but there are a few uh, time stations around the world in the very low range. Uh, there's one in uh, Russia on, I think it's 66 kilohertz. There's another one, I don't remember what country, 17 kilohertz, I believe. So uh, that's the kind of signals you hear down, down, down there. At 100 kilohertz, although today it is pretty much uh, something that is uh, now over, around 100 kilohertz, for a long time, we could hear a weird type of signal, which was the Lauren C type uh, stations that were scattered around the world. But these stations have pretty much moved on. So there's, I think, a few still left in different areas, but it's um, something almost from the past. As we move up in frequency range then we get to um, what is an amateur band actually. The 2200 meter band or 136 kilohertz uh, is the lowest frequency band in amateur radio operators are allowed to transmit and maybe you can hear stuff in there. I've never honestly heard anything um, in that range for amateur radio. So uh, this is something that, I don't know, I've uh, never, never heard anything. But apparently there are some beacons and some AM stations in there that you might actually tune in. Then as we move up, we get to something interesting. Starting around 153 kilohertz, we get to a point where we are actually in a in certain parts of the world, a uh, long wave broadcasting band. Think about it 
like the AM band or medium wave band that we have, but in a much lower frequency. And there are very powerful stations in there. So some uh, of these frequencies, well, the band itself is 153 to 279 kilohertz. And there's some notable stations that are broadcasting in there, uh, including 162 kilohertz, which is known for a very powerful Algeria station on the uh, long wave band. And it's actually often logged even in North America, something I've never heard. Unfortunately, I would have loved to hear that. So there are a few stations still in operation. They are very high-powered stations. In North America, the um, long wave band is used for something else. And that's what you were hearing, actually, at the beginning of the video. 248 kHz is a long wave beacon that is located at the airport here in Montreal. And there are a few things like that. There's uh, beacons at different frequency ranges that can be actually um, heard. So uh, the, here we got 407, I don't track during that, 407 is another one. So these are non-directional beacons. They are there to kind of guide planes with their instruments. Now, the thing is, these are actually being phased out slowly. So as time goes by, you'll hear less and less of these little Morse code IDs. Uh, they are fun to actually monitor and to actually DX. Um, I remember when it was much quieter in uh, the 80s, I would uh, from time to time DX those um, non-directional beacons. So there's a lot of little things there uh, for that. There's also some uh, navigation signals like for example here 294 kilohertz I believe is one so this is uh, a form of telemetry uh, that is uh, actually a maritime type telemetry so um, that you could hear uh, from time to time I believe this one actually comes from the south shore of uh, the island of Montreal and uh, so these are maritime type signals uh, that um, kind of have some uh, navigation, I believe some navigation um, capabilities. As you move up, uh, of course, the uh, medium wave band uh, will go into around uh, 500 kilohertz where you will hear something that is the, it's, really not probably not used anymore but it's the um, international uh, distress uh, frequency and that international distress frequency is not used pretty much not used anymore uh, honestly and um, I don't think you hear a lot of stuff anymore in there um, I'm not even sure there's still some monitoring uh, of that. Now, I've got to say one thing is once you reach 300 kilohertz, this is um, medium wave basically. So, um, below 300 is technically long wave, above 300 kilohertz, it starts to, um, it sounds, it was, it's actually uh, medium wave starting there. It goes up to 3 megahertz, by the way. Now, above 500 kilohertz, uh, at the beginning of 500 kilohertz, there are a few beacons of uh, that, that I know of, some non-directional beacons. Um, I believe there was one from Bermuda, just barely above 500 kilohertz. But usually what we have, and we'll actually expand on the frequency here. If we go here, you'll see that above 500 kilohertz, I get a lot of peaks. Well, because this is what is the medium wave band, or the what we call the AM band on the radio. If I remove the notch, you see that these signals are really peaking high here. And these are actually uh, stations coming through. So if I click one, so here I'm gonna put it AM mode. So you can see here 560 kilohertz, for example. And we'll actually 
try to tune a few signals, 580 kilohertz CFR. So you see there's propagation stuff in here. Uh, signals up and down. I might be overloading my uh, my receiver here a little bit, but um, so 660 WFAN, which is the uh, station up in uh, New York that is a sports station. A few notable signals here to uh, talk about. Uh, there's 770 that I can uh, actually talk here. 770 which is WABC up in New York or down in New York. So everybody in the news now, everyone, all you hear is background checks, background checks from, from Democrats. And it's pretty sad, even Democrats that lost kids in shootings. Are if we go to uh, 860, which is the uh, French language, French, French language, CBC, out of Toronto, Ontario, coming in into Montreal, 880, WCBS out of New York, and so on, up to, of course, 1,000 kilohertz. Let's uh, tune 1,000 kilohertz here. So, of course, this is the AM band, and you see there's a lot of stations to listen to. And this is part of what we call medium wave, actually. So, in reality, when we listen to the AM band, we refer to AM as um, the band, but it's actually a mode of transmissions because these stations are in AM mode. In reality, we should say, uh, I'm listening to medium wave. So, that's what you have in these frequencies. Now, one note. One thing interesting to uh, understand on this medium wave band is that the spacing in North America is 10 kilohertz, but the spacing in Europe is 9 kilohertz. What that does is that when transatlantic DX happens, you can actually, especially with an SDR like this, you might actually, actually see traces of signals that are not on the 10 kilohertz dot, but slightly, slightly off. <laughs> and so this means that you might actually be hearing something coming off of uh, Europe. So if you hear signals or if you hear uh, etherodynes or these tones while listening to a uh, medium wave signal, you might actually be interfered with with a signal coming up from Europe, for example. So that's the first megahertz of the spectrum. Hope you enjoyed this series. And uh, why not, you know, take a listen to the long wave or the medium wave band while we're at it. It's a fun band to uh, actually check out all sorts of details. And in times of low solar activity, it's actually a lot of fun to monitor. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching our videos.